Hello everybody, how's it going? Danny here. So it's been exactly two weeks since I last did my devlog video. I'm gonna show you what's been changed within these two weeks. So first off, the monsters. So right now I have this beholder, what I call monster. So it's simply implemented as it will patrol left and right. And if it sees the player, it will come and chase the player and then attack. That's it. You can jump out of its sight anytime and it will stop chasing you if it's if it cannot see you in a straight line. So I've implemented a uh, special AI that's more like clever AI. So uh, it's Goblin and it's able to uh, pass find the player. So what I've done is I have pre-processed, as the map I generated, I pre-processed all of its blocks to find out what tires are empty, what is a solid block, and what blocks, blocks can be jumped from one to another, uh, I mapped this into a adjacency matrix or um, just a simple array. And I have uh, connected them together and I use this as the blueprint for all the past findings as we see now. So, oh, there's a goblin that just fell off. So I've also added more variations on the map. So if you remember, in the past, we only had one variation of each room tem template type. Uh, I've added, I uh, think, one to two variations in there, so it will change a bit. And I have also spent a uh, one night writing a map editor, so it makes the whole um, map editing thing much more easier. I was I, I was able to uh, draw the map and then generate the adjacency array much easier as well, as well as um, loading it and stuff. Oh, as you can see here, uh, there's a goblin here. And if I stand in here, oh, oops, it fell off. As you can see here, it, it jumps up to uh, because it's able to find the path to the player, so it's able to go to it. So normally, these goblins would just patrol left and right if it cannot see the player. Oh, sorry, if the player is too far away from it, or if it cannot find a valid path to the player. Okay, because uh, if patrols left and right, so it would naturally fall into these gaps to the next level, next floor. So you can see, if I jump here, they're expected to come and jump this, this gap as well. You can see. And even if I climb up here, they should be able to come to me. Oops, I don't want to get stuck here. Okay, let's get these goblins. And I've implemented all the animations. Uh, the goblin, as it is fetched from itch.io, credits to them. And I've connected the animations together so it looks better. And as you can see, it's pretty fun to play around with these path findings. So um, in the, at the start, I used a prototype cube as the enemy, so it was able to follow me around. As you can see, if I stand out here because there's, it's too high for the goblin to jump, it will simply not pathfind to me. It will not come to me because it cannot. It will just patrol left and right with a timer. However, if I stay here, it will come and chase me because it's able to come to me now. So it's pretty fun to connect all these blocks together um, well, as they are randomly generated. And as I have as well uh, connected the exit to the next map, so you're now able to go to the next map with a uh, brand new randomly generated dungeon. Oops. Yep, as you can see, even if I go up to all the way to here, I should be able to come and jump me. Oh no, because the path here. This jump block here, it's too high for the goblin to jump. Also, I've implemented, if I right click, it's able to spawn more goblins. So I've did a lot of optimizations for the goblins. So in the one map, you are able to have 100 goblins without any uh, severe performance impact. So how I did this was using a uh, visual notifier. So if the goblin is out of the viewport, it will simply pause everything, freeze the animation and physics process entirety of it. So now I'm able to have as many goblins as I want in a uh, whole map 
maybe a hundred or something. In the past, there was only uh, five, oh, sorry, fifty goblins in the map, and they will freeze the hell out of it because the game had to process all of the physics at the same time. But yeah, now it looks a bit much better. Um, what I'm planning to do now is, well, I don't like the graphics right here because it looks a bit weird for a roguelike game, and I need more skills to play around with it better to understand the mechanics. Um, so I need to make up more skills as we go. So next time you see my devlog update, hopefully I'll have more skills to show you from the player. So the player is able to combine different skills and it's able to uh, custom using different sequences of combinations. So like they can provide different buffs and effects as well to basically change the game mechanics. I don't know if that would work well in this kind of game, but let's see. It's going to be a lot of grinding to make up these skill effects, but let's see what happens. Until next time.